Do you ever have paintings that just won't go anywhere, no matter what you do? I've got one of those in my current series, actually. Let me show you how I transform it. Hi there, I'm Janine. I'm an artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. One of the paintings in my current series has been frustrating me for a while. Whatever I've done so far doesn't seem to make it better. So I'm going to take some risks to finally turn this into a painting I love. So this is my problem painting. I'm not quite sure what to do with it. I think it's now quite empty. I do have some nice textures happening or visual textures happening on the edges but nothing really in the middle and also I have a lot of this texture here which I'm not too keen on so I might try and get rid of some of that either by scraping with a furniture scraper or maybe some sanding or I might just have to add a bit of gel on top to fill in the gaps. So I'll start with this furniture scraper and see what that can do. So not only is it getting rid of some of the texture, it also is revealing some of the layers underneath and I do really like this. I don't even remember what's under there. I don't know if that's paint or if this is maybe a soft pastel. It could be a pastel. So it is getting a little bit smoother, but I can still feel quite a bit of the texture. It's working really well, actually. Trying to get rid of all of that now. I really like that punch of blue. It, I feel like it needed something um, more saturated colour in here actually, because everything was getting very bland. So it got rid of quite a bit of the texture. I'll also try sanding a little bit. I really love this area here. And this, these little bits that have come off as well. Looks very much like very aged. This is a 80 grit sandpaper, by the way, it's quite rough. There's quite a darker area here, so I'm seeing if I can blend that with the layer on top, if I gradually sand a little bit less going into the new area, into the new paint. Now, a good way to get rid of the dust from all the sanding is these tack cloths. I'll put a link in the description below. They're basically like waxy cloths that I think you usually use for woodwork when you're sanding, but again, sanding. And that picks up any little bits of dust and it sticks to it really well. I'm much happier with that now. I really like the blue and the aged look of it and also how this kind of mirrors the shapes I've made up here. Now I'm not keen on these wavy shapes, so I want to get rid of that. And also this white, I don't think the circle really fits in here. I quite like these dotted marks and I really like this. There's also a white bit here that I want to get over. And now I don't think this really fits in either, so I might just make that a little bit smaller or get rid of it. And um, yeah, I'll do those bits now and then I'll see if I should go over it. Um, with some bolder strokes again with a big brush like this for example and just cover a lot of it again or maybe also do more of a dark color that I can then go over again but I'll fix those bits first well I was also thinking these were the colors I've pre-mixed and maybe I want to introduce a larger area of color again 
I know I covered up quite a lot up here. I think that's that would be too bold. And this is the beige I've been using, which wouldn't really change much on here. This is the green. And also, if I mixed it with white, it would basically look like this. But again, that wouldn't give anything. And I think, actually, I do have some bits of green, but I'm not sure I like them in here. Maybe I'll go more the blue route and also the brown. I feel like the blue and the green doesn't really work that well together. And this is the pink. Again, this would be a lighter version, which I do have. And then a lighter blue, which I feel like there's little bits coming through that look very similar to this kind of light blue. So I think I'm going to replace the green bits with blue. And I'm going to get some of the blue and the this dark rusty colour, which is actually quite similar to the pink, and some of the beige. And I also have the colours I mixed from which uh, were these. So probably want to get some of the ultramarine out in case I want to add more of that somewhere. I definitely need some white if I want some lighter areas and I'll leave these for now, but I might get some later. I think I'll also actually get some of this um, yellow oxide if I want to mix some warmer tones with this. And I like how all the shapes are quite organic, so I won't use a soft brush. I'll use this quite um, bristly one, which will give me some more fuzzy edges. Down here I don't really like this little white bit. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Ultramarine, this is ultramarine, is quite a transparent colour, so it's fairly easy to just add a kind of glaze over this green area. And I'm using very little paint and keep on scrubbing my brush, which will uh, which will result in quite um, soft edges. I didn't plan these this larger area. First, I thought I'll just place any little bits of green, but I do really like this really soft wash of the blue over everything in this corner. So maybe I should repeat that somewhere. How about up here? You can always paint or back over it. It's a bit much here. I think I'll add some more brown. And then this is quite green, but I'm wondering if I should add something else. If I should maybe make that more brown. I think I will make it more brown, but I'll try the blue. I don't mind a few little bits of green like this here. It's a very muted green. This is just adding a very subtle hint of blue over this light area. Now this is slightly different blue and I'm not very keen on it. So I will try and go over that with this blue and see if that makes any difference. I now have little bits of blue all around the painting, which moves your eye around. And the blue is also the darkest colour on here, apart from maybe this. It's not as dark though, this brown. So that is where your eye is drawn to. Now I feel like this bit of blue and this is too much. So I'll go over that with a more browny colour. I'll use this big brush, might as well, because I probably will try and be precise, which is not that great. I don't really want that. And this prevents me from getting too precise, having a large brush. Well, I quite like this. Sort of have happened by accident that I made this really uneven shape, but I like it. Here, I'll probably do it light, but I'll see what happens if I add a little bit of that.
I feel like that's a continuation of up here where we have blue and then the rust color and then blue and the rust color again in kind of a similar texture as here. And then I want to remove a little bit of this blue with this really light color. I just step back a bit so I can see it, see more the overall picture. Like that. I'm wondering if I should move this bit up a little bit because everything's just hanging around the edge apart from sort of this bit. I'll just try it. I also like these little bits of yellow that came from where the paint hadn't properly mixed on the brush. So maybe I should add a tiny bit more yellow somewhere up here. Just a tiniest smidge. I wish it didn't have the white on it. I'll try it with it like that or not. But overall, I'm definitely much happier with it. I'm wondering if this is this blue is too much. Too big, actually. It does add something. There's this little weird bit over here. And then I wonder if I should add a bit more of this light blue somewhere. Maybe if I made this area this colour, then I feel like it's too symmetrical to this bit up here. To this shape, but not, not really. I mean, it doesn't have to be that square. Maybe just a little bit down here. Maybe I don't need this. Try just adding it here. I might use this spatula this time, just to have some different marks on here. It's a little bit too different to all the other bits, but if I scraped it a bit more, some more of the texture underneath can come out. Maybe connect it to this bit. I do like the colour here, I'm not sure about the shape. It's a bit better when it's a bit more organic. It was just too different to have this angular shape. Yeah, I like that better with a little bit of a light colour coming through. This was already almost this colour, so I'm just making it that colour. Maybe a little bit here, in this blue area. And a tiny bit in this. I really like the rusty brown and the blue together, probably because they're quite complementary colours, blue and orange, and this is almost orange. I'm just trying to have one colour in lots of different places, so your eye moves around. I quite like that now. Now I'll leave it for a bit before I look at it again, because I might love it, or I'll come up with something else to do. Yeah, I think that helped, but mm, actually now this looks a bit up there. Maybe I need to blend these a bit better. I think I'll leave it and then look at it again. I really like this one now, actually. The only thing that bothers me is you see where this brown connects to the blue. So I want to create a tiny gap here with the beige colour. Yeah, I think that's better. I haven't quite decided yet if it's finished or if it needs some more tweaks, but for now I'm really happy with it. So I'll leave it for a while and then look at it with fresh eyes again. I've surprised myself actually how much this painting has changed with just a few simple things really. So it really pays off taking risks in your painting. Next time you're stuck, just go for a really drastic change. My favourite techniques for that are removing paint like I've done here, using a large brush to go over it, or maybe use a very different colour. Thanks and bye bye. I've got